I can't believe it. Jerry Springer didn't solve our conflict. And now he's dead. I'm firm in my belief that you can make good art out of anything. The Mars Volta made a perfect album with some incoherent ramblings and rat poison. One of the best British films of the last decade is just Tom Hardy talking on his phone in his car. Tim and Eric sculpted a dramatic tour de force from one man in his father's belt. Smile! Eat your carrots! Cook the dog! Cook the dog! Cook your own dog! So why not make a board-treading, ostentatious romp of bellowing grandiosity based on a TV show with such hard-hitting episode names as I Married a Horse and They Stole My Husband's Eyes. For Jerry Springer, the opera to make sense, it's important to remember just how much of a cultural titan this man was in the 1990s. His eponymous series was a ratings juggernaut, he had cameos in everything from Austin Powers to The Simpsons, he even tried his hand as a comedic actor in 1998's Ringmaster, a movie so awful it's been all but deleted from existence. Okay, I'm alright. Okay, I'm okay, everything okay. Okay. Right. Get this jerk out of here. I'll give you a piece of <laughs> So why not set this guy's shtick to some catchy music? Written and conceived in the UK by composer Richard Thomas and iconoclastic comedian Stuart Lee throughout 2001, Jerry Springer the Opera was workshopped, edited and expanded over several festival appearances and smaller theatrical residencies. <laughs> Within two years, it had evolved into a fully staged extravaganza of excess, sellout runs and national attention, growing from something of an unauthorised inside joke into the critically acclaimed taboo of London's West End. You know, it's easy to occupy the moral high ground. What's more difficult is to confidently occupy the moral low ground. Before I go into greater detail about why it works, where it falters, and the avalanche of controversy that threatened to obliterate everyone involved, we should probably have a quick run through of what this is. Bigger than Dave Letterman, bigger than Bob Hope, and give or take a few million bigger than the fucking Pope. <laughs> we'll be right back. Jerry Springer the Opera starts out much like the talk show from which it was born. An audience baying for blood, riled up by this here warm-up man before the show begins. After which, Jerry introduces his first guest. Dwight is an adulterer who's sleeping with his fiancé's best friend, as well as a trans woman named Tremont, a character who is broached with all the humanity and sensitivity of edgy early 2000s humour, which is a polite way of saying this entire segment has aged like milk. <laughs> Next up we've got Montel. A man who comes clean to his partner about how he likes to dress up like a baby with another woman, all the while longing to make a big BM in his diaper so a maternal figure can come along and wipe away all the poo from his tuchus. I just wanna sh my pants. Oh, I just wanna sh my pants. Oh, pooping in my Calvin Klein. For his final guest, Jerry welcomes Chantel, an aspiring exotic dancer trying to placate her disapproving husband Chucky, a redneck who frequents both strip clubs and KKK rallies. When the Ku Klux Klan shows up and breaks into a tap dance routine, Jerry is shot in the pandemonium. As he lays bleeding out, quadrashagged on a life glug, Jerry is dragged to hell and forced to put on a show to save his very soul. A five-way no-holds-barred screaming match between Satan, Jesus, Adam, Eve and the Virgin Mary. A cacophonous spat that can only be stopped by the arrival of God Almighty. What the hell was that? Yep. 
This sure is a thing that exists. Applying its rancid soapiness to the grand operatic tradition of an almost entirely sung story, delivered by the ear-bursting warbles of seasoned singers, this is first and foremost an exercise in dragging opera back down into the gutter from whence it came. A lewd reminder that, despite its upper crust standing in contemporary culture, opera began as a noisy assembly of the lowest rungs of society a place where folks would gamble and have sex in the stalls, whilst some form of broad comedy played out on stage. As such, Jerry Springer the Opera comes across as a belching mashup of Das Rheingold, part one of Wagner's Ring Cycle, and a bar band cover of The Devil Went Down to Georgia. A satirical sleazefest that parodies talk show tropes whilst lamenting the five minutes of fame debasement they feed on. Which isn't to say that what we're watching here is some form of smug lecture. At the end of the day, much of the humour comes down to the simple joys of hearing the foulest language imaginable belted out as if they were the gilded lyrics of some Puccini masterpiece. I came home from a titty bar where I spent all night. She covers me in kerosene and sets me fucking alight. Beneath the four letter words, it's a tongue in cheek indictment of television and its power to gradually erode our collective empathy. As Lee succinctly explained to the arts desk in 2006, it's about ethics and how we deal with and judge one another. The three main subjects of the first act are all just trying to find happiness in a manner that's none of our business or hurtful to us in any way. Yet, once the other guests, the chanting crowds and Jerry's deadpan demeanour turn on them, that's where we get our giggles. Punching down at those who have already been ground into the dirt. Jerry, don't bullshit me. You and me both, we know they are scum. Filthy sucking scum. And your job is to control those scum and keep them from upstaging my guests. From here, Jerry Springer the Opera turns up the satirical dial on the gay panic, transphobia, kink shaming, and classism of the TV show until you can feel it in your teeth. F*** you. F*** you all! Unfortunately, with this overt provocation comes an unfortunate downside. Too often things devolve into the kind of edgelord one-upmanship, where gutter talk escalates into guttural filth and so on and so on, until it all just starts to feel try-hard. So deep me! And throw me to the lesbians. You could easily shave 25 minutes off the two hour runtime by cutting out the inexcusable slurs and overly repetitious F bomb refrains, making for a tighter, less scattershot experience. That being said, it's hard to imagine any amount of editing would have satisfied the salivating jaws of controversy that were to follow. Think of the children! Won't somebody please think of the children! The footage I've been using here is largely culled from a 2005 taping of the production for the BBC. Within days of its initial broadcast, it managed to rack up a record-breaking 63,000 complaints, presumably from people who know nothing of satire, adult language, or how to have even one shred of chill. Which brings us to the religious extremists. <laughs> Introducing Christian Voice. Here's their logo, and here's a tastefully edited image of their leader, Stephen Green. What an asshole! I hate that guy, and so do you! Now, Christian Voice isn't asking for much. They just want all British law to be structured around biblical scripture, the criminalization of women's reproductive rights, the decriminalization of marital rape, and the complete eradication of homosexuality. 
You see, these god-fearing folk didn't take too kindly to these artsy-fartsy types, drawing parallels between Christianity and a nasty piece of daytime television. And you, I mean, uh, <laughs> you need to go find God, do something, you can't keep your own freaking drama to yourself, you need to keep it the hell out of my life. So Christian Voice took it upon themselves to protect their invincible, omnipresent creator from a bunch of silly jokes. They picketed, doxxed, and sent death threats to the BBC, staged protests outside theatres, and in a move that was sure to please that godfella they love so much, they bullied a cancer charity out of accepting a charitable donation from the opera. Wow, what an asshole. Eventually, Christian Voice unsuccessfully tried to prosecute every venue, broadcast network, and theatre company that dared to stage the production, signing off a letter of their litigious intent with the words, The presence of Jerry Springer the opera brings, I believe, the judgement of God. Well, I guess that means we've got Rick Rubin in the clouds up there to thank for smiting us with Brexit and this chud. In the end, the creators of the opera stepped back from the project due to constant abuse from the likes of the BNP, Christian Voice, and other conservative weirdos who haven't actually seen it, but none of that has stopped the production from running across the world right up to this very day. And for better or for worse, history defines us by what we do and what we choose not to do. Jerry Springer once described his pop cultural flagship as the stupidest show on TV and of no redeeming social worth whatsoever, and yet it's hard not to trace a line between its preposterous off-kilter histrionics and a reality that too often mimics its ugly example. <laughs> oh, wow. Life hasn't so much imitated art as it's become a grisly caricature of trash television. Twenty years ago, when Jerry uttered a line in the opera about maybe running for president, it was met with a hearty giggle. Today, it's hard to imagine anyone laughing. Jerry Springer the opera saw the writing on the wall a long time ago, adding a few words of warning before drawing a pornographic doodle and running away. You're never going to agree on everything! And what's so bad about that? Haven't you people heard of yin and yang? Love and hate? Attraction and repulsion? It's the human condition we're talking about here! So, till next time... Take care of yourselves. and each other. A wooden chair thrown across the room for our Patreon producers Jennifer C, Claire MD, Becky O, J Carr and Nicholas Le Revere, and a shocking paternity test for all these amazing folks who support our channel over on Patreon. So, what's the weirdest musical you've ever seen, and did you shamefully grow up watching Jerry Springer, just like I did? Please like and leave us a comment below as it really helps the channel out, and feel free to share these videos wherever you do that sort of thing. If you're in a position to do so, consider checking out our Patreon at the link in the description below, where you can get access to our film club, our private discord, and your name in the end credits. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, this is In Frame Out. Yeah.